When it comes to resin-based 3D printers, or MSLA, which is the technology most common resin 3D printers are using, we know that both the resin as well as the VAT or the FEP foam on the bottom and the LCD screen are considered consumables. And on the VAT for that FEP, I've gotten anywhere from a few weeks to a few months out of that film, just depending on how often I'm printing, how large I'm printing, and how aggressive the peel force is, which can vary from printer to printer or definitely from resin to resin. Two years ago, I made a video on the replacement process of the FEP film, which essentially looks like taking off the vat, removing a ton of screws on the bottom, removing that old damaged film and replacing it with a new film and then reassembling it by inserting all those screws again. And although it is quite a tedious process and not something I'd consider fun, it's not exactly difficult. And over the last two years, not much has changed. Still to this day, that is nearly how you replace the film on just about every resin 3D printer. Now replacing the LCD screens on the other hand is something I haven't had to do very many times. I did replace it once early on on the Phenom, which was a fairly simple process. And luckily because of the kind of newer standard, which is the monochrome LCD screens, those screens are rated for a couple thousand hours. So you shouldn't really have to replace it for a really long time. Unfortunately, a couple of months ago when I was using my Saturn, I had a failed print and I thought that I had gotten rid of all of the particles from the vat by kind of going through it. And when I went to start a new print, I found out that was not the case. And I had a small piece of hardened resin. When the bed came down and homed, it actually pushed that resin through the FEP film, puncturing it and pushing that shard into the LCD screen, completely damaging it. I did end up getting a replacement LCD screen in and this past week I got it up and running again. However, it was quite a frustrating process and that was really due to some extra steps and some ambiguity in Elegoo's instructions on how to replace that screen. And during my time digging online trying to answer the questions I had about this replacement process, I found a bunch of Reddit posts from other Saturn owners complaining that the replacement screens that they got were defective or not working or they just couldn't figure it out. And so once I finally figured out what the correct process or steps were, I knew that I had to make a video for all of the current Saturn or future Saturn owners because it is quite a popular machine and I'm sure many will have to at one point or another replace it and although this does seem fairly unique to the Saturn printer it does use the Chitu systems board which is fairly common and used in a lot of other printers so this might be something that actually applies to other machines out there that I just haven't discovered yet. Regardless, if you are interested in resin printing or have a resin printer, this should still give you some pointers on the correct way to replace your LCD screen. So even if you don't have the Saturn, there might be some useful things in this video. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right to today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Sariatech. Their resins have been incredibly consistent and easy to use on a wide range of printers that I've tested them on, which is why they have been my go-to resin manufacturer for the past couple of years. Another huge plus is that they are some of the lowest odor resins I've used, which is very important to me given the fairly small space I'm working in. Their fast line of resins is great for everyday model printing, and they've been pushing the bar with a wide range of engineering resins, like their high strength, flexible, castable, and their sculpt line for high temp parts. I'll place links in the description to our resin playlist if you'd like to take a further look into some of the resins that we've tested out on this channel, as well as a link to their store so that you can try them out for yourself. For the most part, the hardware side of replacing that LCD screen wasn't too difficult, and the three minute video that Elegoo put together actually did get me to the final step of where things got a little bit complicated. But because there were some differences between my Saturn and the instructions in their video, I decided we will also run through the hardware side of things. Timestamps will be down below in case you wanna jump around if you're already kind of done with the hardware swap and just need help with the firmware side of things. Of course, before we go ahead and do this, make sure that your Saturn is powered off and go ahead and unplug the power cable just to be on the safe side. And we will need to start off by unclipping the existing LCD screen cable. And this will be done by accessing the door on the right side of the machine. So go ahead and turn the printer towards the right side and there will be four screws that you'll need to remove to gain access to that LCD ribbon cable. In Elegoo's video, it seems really easy to remove that door, but mine took quite a bit of force due to some tape on the very top of it that is holding that door to the frame of the printer. It is sheet metal and there's nothing really fragile, so don't be afraid to kind of go ahead and use a flathead or something like that if you need to, to go ahead and pry that little door off. The ribbon cable closest to you when you open the side door is the one for the LCD screen and the one that you'll need to unplug. 
To do so, you can either use your nail or a tiny flathead to pop up the little lever on the port, which will free that cable. In Elegoo's video, their cable just slides right out, which was not the case with mine. There was actually a piece of adhesive across that ribbon cable, making it impossible to just pull it out. So for that, again, I just went ahead and used my nail. I went ahead and peeled off the adhesive that was holding that ribbon cable down to the controller board, and then it was able to pull out of the slot. Although that ribbon cable is very fragile, if you are replacing your LCD screen, I'm sure that the reason for doing that is that your LCD screen is either broken or defective. So there's really not much risk in pulling hard in case you damage the ribbon cable because you will not be using it again. Once that ribbon cable is loose, we will need to go ahead and remove the screws on the top of the printer. In Elegoo's video, there are six silver screws on the outer perimeter of the printer, while on my Elegoo Saturn, there was eight. The only two screws that you're not going to be removing are the two towards the back center, which are the ones holding the stepper motor in place. Once you've got those screws removed, you can separate the top half from the bottom half of the printer. However, you will want to kind of tilt it at an angle first and reach in with one of your hands to unplug both the Z end stop as well as the stepper motor cable from the main board. Elegoo does mention in their video wearing gloves, which I did not go ahead and do. The key thing here is that you don't wanna to touch the LED array directly because if you have any kinds of oils or things like that on your hands, it could cause them to burn up quicker. So just be mindful if you're not wearing gloves to not actually touch that LED array. After that, we will need to remove the black tape that is on the top of the uh, printer surrounding the LCD screen. The kit does come with extra tape when you get the replacement LCD screen, so you don't need to try to preserve that. Just go ahead and peel it all off and throw it away. Next, we'll need to flip over the top half of the resin printer to gain access to the bottom side of the LCD screen. In Elegoo's video, they actually show that the LCD screen has four screws that are holding it in place. On my printer, there was no screws at all. So if you have those four screws, go ahead and remove the four screws. But in my instance, it was just some double-sided adhesive that was underneath the perimeter of the screen. So all I had to do was go ahead and take my two thumbs push on the bottom side of the LCD screen until it kind of popped up, and then I just pulled off the old LCD screen completely. Much of what we're gonna be doing now is just the exact opposite of the first half of what we've done. So I do recommend if there is any of that double-sided adhesive that didn't come off with the LCD screen to try to either clean or scrape that away from the actual frame of where the new LCD screen is going to be coming in. But the kit does come with those double-sided adhesive strips. So I went ahead and placed those around the perimeter. I did my best to center them as, as much as I possibly could. And then to remove the top film from that double-sided adhesive, I went ahead and just used my X-Acto knife. It made it really easy to kind of uh, get that to start peeling. And then I used my finger to just peel off the cover of those adhesive strips. Now that the double-sided adhesive is in place, we can go ahead and grab our new screen. You'll need to remove the cover on the backing. It'll either have some kind of a screen protector on the backside or some sort of plastic film. So go ahead and pull that off and then take the ribbon cable and the top portion where it's kind of like the uh, PCB of the LCD screen and just feed that through the thin slot in the top of the aluminum. And once you've got that through there, it's time to go ahead and place that new LCD screen on top of that those thin adhesive strips that we went ahead and placed. And just make sure you do your best to align it before you actually set it on the adhesive. You kind of want it to be more towards the bottom of the aluminum. I then went ahead and applied a little bit of pressure to the outside edges just to make sure that the adhesive was really biting onto the LCD screen. Not too much force, but just a little bit. And then again, because you have peeled off the backing of the LCD screen on the underside, make sure that you are not touching the underside of that exposed LCD screen. Once the LCD screen is in place, take the new strips of black tape and just go ahead and surround the perimeter on the top of the LCD screen. The main goal of this is if there's ever any kind of a resin leak, you really want to prevent that resin from leaking on the sides of the LCD screen and either damaging the LCD screen or making its way down to the main board or your uh, LEDs, LED array and damaging that. So just go ahead and outline the perimeter. You want kind of half of it on the LCD screen and half of it on the aluminum. Next, you can go ahead and pull the tab, which will remove the screen protector off the top side of the LCD screen. You can also go ahead and wait until everything is back together and assembled. I opted to remove it now, but the key thing is just before you run a print, you need to remove that screen protector on the top side of the LCD screen. Once done with that, go ahead and place the top half of the Saturn on the bottom half, plug in that Z end stop and go ahead and plug in the stepper motor cable. And this is when I kind of really start to deviate from those instructions. I don't recommend installing any of those top silver screws yet until you make sure everything is working correctly. 
At this point, I recommend going in through the right side of the machine where there's that little window that we originally went through to remove the old ribbon cable or at least remove it from the board and go ahead and insert the new ribbon cable back into that slot and lock down the latch to make sure it's, it's biting down on that ribbon cable. And if you are lucky when you turn on the printer right now and you go under the exposure test, you'll see the rectangle displayed and really everything is done on your end other than assembling or reassembling the last couple of screws. In my instance, that was not the case and I actually don't think that's going to be the case for many people. The reason for that is after doing quite a bit of research, I discovered that the Saturn actually has three different LCD screens and that's not a big deal, but the, the issue comes into play is that those LCD screens all require their own unique firmware in order for the Elegoo Saturn to actually be able to communicate with them. So if you don't have the exact same LCD screen model that came into your machine, when you go ahead and plug everything back in and try to display an image, nothing is going to work until you flash the appropriate firmware for that LCD screen to the printer. Luckily, also, this isn't a very difficult process. And the main issue is that, again, just it's kind of hard to figure out that that is the case and also the instructions aren't exactly the best. So I will link you guys down below in the description over to the Elegoo support page. You'll need to click that, go to Saturn and then go under the firmware section. And there's also uh, going to be a link within that section that'll actually help you determine the new LCD screen, what the model is that you have. And the easiest method I found was on the actual ribbon cable itself, it states what model that LCD screen is, which is how I was able to determine that I had the PJV5. After you've determined the LCD screen, you'll need to download the corresponding firmware, which will be in a zip file that you will need to extract. Under the machine firmware folder, you'll then need to drag both the update.lcd file as well as the cbd file to the root of your printer's flash drive. It's not a requirement, but I did format the flash drive beforehand just to make sure that those were the only two files on that drive. Next, eject the flash drive. Make sure your printer is off before plugging in the flash drive and flip on your Saturn. You will hear your printer beep during the booting process, which means that the printer is flashing that update.lcd file. Finally, go under the print menu and select the .cbd file that you dragged onto your flash drive and hit the play button or the print button. It'll take a few seconds to complete and if everything goes correctly, going under the exposure, you should now see the rectangle display, meaning that the screen is working correctly. In my case, even after flashing the correct firmware, I did not see the rectangle from the exposure test displayed and it ended up being that I had installed the ribbon cable backwards. My old ribbon cable and my new ribbon cable looked completely different. And on the new one, based off the way it kind of went downwards, it, it wasn't very evident to me which direction it needed to be installed, which is the reason why we didn't install those top eight screws or these side panel screws yet. So I went ahead, flipped that ribbon cable, ran the exposure test one more time, saw the rectangle displayed, and I was able to then reinstall the eight screws on the top and the four screws on the side. The last thing you'll definitely wanna do before running your first print is loosen the four screws on your build plate and quickly do a re-level. The reason we're doing that is because they are three different models of LCD screens. If there is any deviation in thickness that could damage your brand new LCD screen, and even with the things like the adhesive strips that we added, if there's any deviation in that, it's just a good idea to do a quick re-level to make sure that your Z offset from that new LCD screen is the correct height. Now, of course, all that's left is to actually print. And for this, I grabbed some Soriatech resin and the buff Shiba model from Chaos Cortex that I'm going to be giving to a friend. And I ran that print, which turned out absolutely amazing. And I'm very, very happy to have my Saturn back up and running. And I will definitely be triple checking from now on if I ever have a failed print. I might even completely empty the vat just to be on the safe side because I really do not want to go through this again. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you have an Elegoo Saturn that you were trying to replace the LCD screen on, this answered all your questions and you're now up and running. Or if you've got any other resin printer and you were just wanting to see what is it like replacing the LCD screen that you've again got a better understanding of what goes into it. I did some digging and it looks like the Elegoo Mars models as well as the Epax printers that use the Chitu boards didn't require any kind of custom firmware flash. So hopefully you'll just have to do the you know physical replacement, not the firmware whenever it's time for you to replace your printer's LCD screen. But in all honesty, the firmware is only a couple extra minutes and it's not that big of a deal. The main issue was that in Elegoo's video and in the instructions that came with the actual uh, replacement screen itself, it was very unclear about what you were supposed to do. And 
I thought maybe it was just me, but after seeing many different conversations on Reddit and different forums about having issues, I knew that I was not alone. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I will place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.